Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bex and today I'm sharing five things that I do when the devil is getting at me. Hey guys, I don't know about you, but in my walk with Christ, this has happened many times and it will happen many more times in the future. Satan tries to come at you, sometimes in full force, sometimes with a little bit of force, um, to kind of throw you off of your relationship, to throw you off your walk. And he so often does this when you are dedicated to living your life for Jesus, when you are trying to make changes in your life um, to live a life that's more Christ-like, when you've um, given into the plan that he has for you, or you're going and taking a step out in faith that God has called you to do. Things like getting baptised, um, choosing to be a member of your church, taking on leadership in the church, I'm going into ministry, like all of those things are big steps out in faith and Satan hates that because he doesn't want you to take steps out in faith. He doesn't want you to receive eternal life. He doesn't want you to receive blessings from God. He doesn't want you to show others that Jesus is amazing and win hearts for Christ. He doesn't want you to do any of those things. He doesn't want you to receive the blessings that God has, um, they're waiting for you and he doesn't want to see you thrive as a Christian either and so he wants to come in and wreck it <laughs> and this happens to me whenever I take steps out in faith and when I'm just really drawing a lot close to God you know some of the challenges I've done some of the times I've spent um, in my weeks just really trying to draw close to God Satan has come at me but at the moment he is definitely coming at me because I've taken the steps out I've made the decision to follow God's calling on my life to go into ministry and all of the different kind of interviews and stuff that I've been going through I have a few things coming up this week because I keep saying yes and stepping into it now Satan is really um like reacting to that and wants to knock me off and so for me in this last week I've just been struggling you know with having dreams that make you scared for the future or worried or anxious for the things that are to come he makes me remember times in my life when I didn't live for God or when I've sinned against him or when I've been felt it been feeling guilty or ashamed he um really affects the way that I want to live my life. So maybe I'm Mina and I've been struggling more in that week to be gracious. Satan uses a lot of ways to throw us off. You know, he makes it harder for me to read the word. I get more distracted than I did before. All of those are things that Satan's trying to do to throw me off. He wants me to feel so ill-equipped, so anxious, so not ready, so bad that there's no way I could step into this calling for God because I'm just too bad and there's no way that God should forgive me. And he wants to unravel everything that God has done for me. And so that's what's been happening to me this week. And rather than sharing a Bible with Bex, I wanted to share with you five things I genuinely do when these things happen because they're gonna be happening to you too. Um, whether you're newer in your faith or you've been in faith for 50 plus years, um, these things happen, Satan comes at you. And so I just wanna share some of the things that I do to battle it, to get through it. And I hope that it just encourages you or gives you some encouragement um, to keep fighting. Because the one thing we should never do is give in and let Satan win because that's all he wants. He wants us to give up and walk away from our faith. And so the last thing that we want is to let him win because we want Jesus to be victorious. He is victorious and because he's already conquered sin and death and shame and all of it, we can be victorious if we stand true in our faith. So let me share the five things that I do when Satan is really getting at me. Okay, the first thing that I do is stay really determined to be in the word. You guys know I've talked about it a lot that in the last year I've really made an effort to read my Bible every day and it's something that is really implemented into my life now. But whenever these things happen, when I'm reading, I get distracted, I'm tired more, I don't feel like it. And that is when I make the choice to be really determined to stay in the word. Even if I'm tired, even if I'm distracted, even if I have to read it three or four times over, I'm going to do it because the last thing I want is to give up on reading the word, to give up on hearing God's voice today, to give up on um, just putting myself into the best mindset that I can by dwelling in God's rich words for me by not doing it at all. So the first thing I do is just stay really determined to stay in the word. No matter whether I, I even read less, you know, one chapter, three lines, one verse, the verse of the day, like just continue to read it and stay in the word as much as you can. Don't give up and totally ignore your Bible for a week because you're gonna feel worse off for it. Um, stay in the word. Okay, my second tip is make sure that you go to church or that prayer meeting or that worship event, like whatever it is in your calendar. So let's say for this week, um, what I had coming up was this Sunday, which is to go to church and we have a praise and like worship thing going on on Zoom this afternoon. 
and I was like really not feeling like going to church I said I wasn't going to go to the worship thing on zoom but actually that's what I need to do I need to make sure that I go so that even if I'm not feeling it I don't need to fake it and pretend like I'm in the middle of the worship session having a great time I don't have to overly fake it but I should go there and immerse myself in worship in time and fellowship with other Christians and keep myself in the fellowship because when we don't go to those things that we're already on our calendar I'm not saying go out of your way and do things you weren't going to do but the things on your calendar don't decide to just not go because what Satan wants to do is single you off and get you out on your own and attack you more but if you're there in the building with all these people who love God like there's just something healing about being around other people and being in the spirit and it's just so helpful in the amount of times that I've thought about not going to church but when I go it always benefits me more than not going like just go like today I went and I'm so glad that I went um, the service was just so good. It spoke to my heart. The worship just spoke to my heart. Just seeing everyone there, people asking how you are, made me feel better. Just some of the conversations I had were so uplifting today. Just little things like compliments or just remembering that you had something going on last week that you told them about. Like that kind of stuff just lifted me out of this like darkness and hard time because Satan's coming at me. So make sure if you can, whatever's on your calendar that has to do with like being in fellowship with other people, try and go to it. Okay, my third thing that I do is I try and share what's going on with a Christian friend that can pray for me. Whether it's like your closest friend, whether it's your accountability partner, whether it's somebody at church that you trust or a leader, just tell someone. You don't always have to tell them what it is that Satan's bringing up for you if it's personal or something you find difficult to share, but tell them that at the moment Satan is really like having warfare with me, like, or, you know, I was... A lot of people will know this, when people are being baptised, we tend to pray and pray and pray for that person for a really long time afterwards so that Satan doesn't attack them so much that they struggle, you know? We want, we want to keep praying for them, so go and tell a Christian friend that can pray for you what's happening. Because the more prayer, the more power in the name of Jesus. The more prayer, the more you're going to be lifted up when you're struggling to lift yourself up. And it just helps you to not feel so ashamed or feel bad because it's okay to share it. We should share it with each other and help one another. And they might have great advice for you and encouragement and they can check on you. And there's just so many benefits to telling a friend what's going on and having them pray alongside with you. Okay, my fourth tip that I like to do is whatever the things that are coming up, like I get a lot of dreams, um, which are not very nice, either nightmares or old memories or ang ang things are trying to make me anxious about things coming up in the future. And I get a lot of like in thoughts, you know, they're bringing up things in the past that made me feel shame, made me feel guilty, made me feel bad. Take all of those things and take and, and talk to Jesus. Take them and tell him about it. Literally this morning I was reading the word and I had a horrible memory come into my mind, something that I was just ashamed of. And I actually stopped and said, no, I'm going to pray to God right now and I'm going to tell him, like, I know you forgave me for this. I know you washed it away. Please help me to move on. Help me to let it go. Don't let Satan remind me of it and make me dwell on it. Don't let me forget that you've already forgiven me and washed it away and that you don't even remember it anymore. You've wiped it away from your memory, that, that thing I did in the past. Take it to God. Like, don't sit with it and let it eat at you. Just command the word of God over your life. Just remind yourself that you are forgiven and that you have moved on. If it's something you haven't repented for, that's the time to repent and be forgiven. But a lot of the time Satan brings up things that you've already dealt with with God. You've already told him the truth. You've already asked for forgiveness and he's forgiven you. But he's reminding you to make you feel bad, to make you feel not qualified, to make you feel not loved anymore. And none of those things are true. So don't let Satan do that to you. Just speak truth over your life, whether it's verses that say that, you know, your transgressions have been wiped away, that he remembers them no more, that you are forgiven in the name of Jesus. Um, or whether it's just praying. I, I seriously like recommend this and it's helped me so much with dealing with shame in the past is to take those shameful events that I'm being reminded of and tell God about it, talk to him, pray um, about it and just speak truth over it so that it actually wipes it away and I was able to carry on reading the word and actually move on and during that time those memories faded out after like, you know, 30 minutes because I spoke truth over it and refused to let Satan to lie to me anymore. And my last one, number okay. five, is think about the activities that you're doing and see whether or not they're helping or hindering. So what I'm talking about is the TV shows that you're watching, the music you're listening to, um, just the way that you're doing things. Are the activities that you're doing making the way that you feel, that like weight and that heaviness, that darkness that Satan kind of brings on us, are you making it worse or are you making it better? 
because I know that I'm guilty of listening to sadder or depressing or angrier music when I'm in that mood, but all it does is fuel the fire. And that's what Satan wants me to do. He wants me to fuel the fire of feeling worse or watching a movie that's sad and depressing or watching a show that just like has everybody arguing and being, anno being annoyed and being moody or just really negative and damaging behaviors. Like don't, don't put yourself in that position. It's so easy for us to do that, to go and do something that's gonna make those moods worse. You know, it's okay to listen to sad songs, but it's usually not the best time to do it when you're already deep in those emotions and you're struggling to come out of it because you're not gonna get out of it any quicker by dwelling and, you know, wallowing even more into those feelings. You wanna try and do stuff to bring you out of it, especially when it's a spiritual warfare thing. Satan uses everything in ways you would have no idea, the sub like the subconscious stuff that you'll be listening to and he'll be feeding into it. So I would say really think about it for me, um, music is one, what programs I watch, some of those programs are fine to watch, just not when I'm in that mood, um, and then things like what, the time I spend on Instagram or YouTube, you know, going through reels, am I paying attention to what I'm listening to, um, am I mindlessly scrolling for hours on end, just wallowing instead of actually getting up and spending time with someone, or getting up and just doing an, a positive activity, colouring, crafting, making music, like doing something that's going to help me deal with my feelings rather than dwell in my feelings. If you are a writer or a singer or anything like that, write about your feelings, journal your feelings, talk about your feelings with someone, but just do positive things rather than dwelling in it because it's okay to be sad and to express to someone that you're sad or you're really hard or it's depressing or you're so in the darkness that you can't see the light. But don't compound it by doing activities that you don't need to do that are just going to make you feel worse. Because in my experience, it's never helped. It's only made it worse. Okay, guys, those are my five things that I do. Um, they're just five things I thought about um, that I do pretty much every single time that's happened. And I just wanted to share them with you guys. Let me know what you do. Um, what are some of the things that you do to really battle against Satan and get through it when he's coming at you? I would love to hear and s just share it with our tips because different things work for different people. Um, and I'm so here for trying different things to help me through this. And I hope that some of my tips help you guys. Just be sure to know that... Um, these times when Satan comes at you do not last forever. They are for a short time and you can make it through. You can persevere in your faith. And when you make it to the other side, God rewards you and blesses you and you are stronger for it. And the next time Satan comes, you are more equipped to stand against him. So I just want to encourage you today that no matter where you are, spend time in the word, talk to God, just remain confident in the knowledge that you are saved and that no matter what he says to you, um, you have been forgiven and you are loved by Jesus. All you need to do is confess of your sins, confess of the fact that you try to be Lord over your life and that actually now you want Jesus to be Lord over your life. And once you've asked him to be in your life and you've committed to living your life for Jesus, there is nothing that anyone can do to separate you from the love of God. I pray that you have an amazing Sunday. I pray that you will be blessed and strengthened in your faith. And I will see you guys on Wednesday for a Rooted Unboxing. Bye guys!